Okay, the term split step, it's like a little kid being on the sidewalk and they're just playing hopscotch. They, you bring your feet together. It's an organizational step. You make the split step right before the ball bounces. You make the split step when your opponent, he or she, they put their eyes down to make the hit. The split step is just stop and go. What you're going to do is split step. You're going to use your recognition skills to read your opponent's body position, their racket face, and then you analyze to anticipate. When you when you're serving a volley, perhaps you can get four steps in because your opponent is way, way behind the baseline returning serve. So it's not automatically one, two, three split step. We just use that as a guideline from a drill standpoint. So in the double sequences, you'll hear us say serve, one, two, three, split step. And then when you split step, it's like there's a giant V in front of you. And you're going to move to the ball on a diagonal so you can get the ball higher above the level of the net. Um, if you watch the best players in the world, you'll see at times when they're playing doubles that they'll serve, and not always do they split step. But when you're playing singles, you have to cover 27 feet. Years ago, when players were serving volleying, you would see at Wimbledon the run-up. About halfway between the baseline and the service line, you would see where the grass would be worn out because the players would be split stepping. Very, very typical for players to be told that they're going to run into the service line and stop. They're going to go in as far as they possibly can. But again, the best players, effortless effort, they make it look easy. The top players, singles and doubles, when they serve, they go to the net in stages. They take care of the serve. Now they move forward. Now from here they split step with um, just what, what you do with your left shoulder when you serve the left elbow. You're going to keep your left elbow up like this. Now you make your hit. Okay, now after the hit, this left elbow is going to pull back so my right hip can go forward. Now when it comes down to we've covered footwork, the players who come in with their back foot typically get further into the net. The players who get in with their front foot, and most players serve with their front foot going forward first, they actually hit the serve harder. And if I had to make a choice, I would say I would take the way I'm going to hit the serve harder. Because now what's going to happen is the return's going to be higher. The return's going to be floating. You would have taken your serve as a plus and forced them to hit a minus on the return. So with that, say someone hits a really, really weak return, you can see the players just actually forget the split step and they just sprint in. So we have to be very careful in tennis to stay away from the words always and never. But it's very, very important to understand the split step is not just for when you go to the net. You see players make a hit, they recover, they split step. They're constantly organizing their feet so they can change their direction. So when it comes down to the bunny hop, the, the, the spring step, the split step, the jump step, organizational step, very, very important to teach and make sure that kids know when and how to split step.